featured comment at the bottom of the page. I'm working with a couple of researchers and we're very interested to knowing or to learn more about your bear cam viewing experience and your thoughts on, on on conservation. So please take that survey if you haven't done so already. Well, let's talk about Fat Bear Week, folks. Um, it's a bit the fattest mm -hmm. week of the year. <laughs> but Brooklyn, what is Fat Bear Week and how can people uh, participate in it? <clears throat> Fat Bear Week is a head-to-head -head racket competition similar to that of March Madness. Um, the public has the opportunity to vote on the bear they believe to be the fattest or has experienced the most impressive weight gain of the season. This allows us to recognize the hard work that the bears at Brooks River um, as they eat a year's worth of food in six months, all in preparation for hibernation. But this year is going to be a little bit different. Uh, Katmai National Park, in partnership with Explore.org and the Katmai Conservancy, have created a new Fat Bear Week website. This site is going to be the main hub for all things fat bears this season. Each day, Naomi and I are going to be sharing pairings of the bears, um, and we will give you a chance to vote on the bear that you believe to be the fattest of them all. The voting will be available on the website as well. Um, it'll be linked on Katmai's Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So no matter where you are connected, you're going to have the opportunity to participate this season. But Mike, can you share a little bit about our bracket matchups this year? Oh, absolutely. I think maybe before we get to that, though, uh, we wanted, uh, I wanted to ask Naomi, uh, how do bears make the cut? How did we winnow uh, down the 70 or 80 bears at Brooks River before um, to, just down to 12 contestants? Um, it takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, both from the bears and from Brooklyn and me. Um, so first, the bears have to be fat. That's the first qualification. Um, secondly, we have to have seen them both early in the season in June and July, as well as at the end of the season in September. Some bears only show up in June and July and don't show up in September and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So you got to be a two season, two season bear. And then uh, third, we have to be able to get photos of the bears. Um, some of them can hide a little bit too much or they're in the water all the time. Um, that's what it takes to be a really fat bear is to be in that water fishing all the time. So um, the bears that meet those qualifications are our initial contenders. Then Brooklyn and I go through that list and we see, hmm, what are the really great stories here? And, and who, you know, who are interesting bears and who really got fat this season? And uh, that's what we're going to reveal very shortly. And sometimes uh, people ask us, you know, how, how, can I, how can I vote? How do I choose? How do I make a decision? And your Fat Bear Week vote really can be based on any number of factors. Uh, this is a subjective competition. So I want to make that clear to everybody. You can consider a bear's overall uh, growth, like that experienced by cubs and younger bears, because uh, they grow proportionally more in a year than uh, the fully grown adults. Uh, perhaps you want to you know, weigh your uh, vote towards bears with extenuating circumstances, like a mother raising her cubs, for instance, and having to devote so much energy into that. Or you can just base your vote on who you think is the overall fattest bear. So there's really no one correct set of criteria to base your vote on. And I think that's one thing that makes Fat Bear Week so much fun. And um, I look forward to everybody campaigning vigorously for your favorite um, Fat Bear Week bear. But let's get to the, get to the bracket, like you mentioned, um, uh, uh, Brooklyn, because uh, I think everyone really wants to see uh, this year's um, competitors. So we're going to move through the back bracket matchup by matchup. We're going to start with a blank one, as you see here, and then we're going to um, go by day by day, uh, eight bears in the first round, and then four bears that made a buy, and they'll, uh, they'll be in the second round. On September 30th, the first match of Fat Bear Week is between two large adult males. Number 151 Walker in the legendary 856. Uh, Brooklyn, what does Walker bring to this year's competition? I mean, you said it, he is a larger adult male. Um, but what's most impressive is that over the time that he has been at the Brooks Falls, he originally um, was relatively playful. He was searching out bears, 
um, having prolonged play fights. Um, but over the last few years, he has gained considerable weight, but also has been willing to throw that weight around. Um, he's developed a more assertive disposition and has become one of the more dominant bears on the river. And he continues to challenge some of these other bears. So I would say that 151 is really an up and comer, getting ready to challenge one of the most dominant bears that we have on the river. Naomi, could you share a little bit about 856? I sure can. Well, bear 856 is competitive all, all the time. He is our most dominant bear. When he walks into the river at the falls, all the other bears make way. And he has been that dominant for almost a decade. He's about 20 years old now. And um, I'd say, you know, it's tough to compete with this bear because he doesn't care what you think. He All he cares is that you know he is the top bear. And um, one thing about 856, he eats all the time. Uh, but like humans, he is, um, humans, if you're taller, you can carry your weight better. Um, and 856 is a tall bear. So um, he is fat and he has a big frame. So keep competing with him is going to be tough. And certainly 151 doesn't compete with 856 along the river. So I'll just make that clear. Mike? And the winner of those, that matchup actually will face um, a, a perennial Fat Bear Week favorite, number 480 Otis. Otis is one of the oldest bears currently using uh, Brooks River. He was first identified as an older subadult or young adult bear in 2001. He's in his mid, so right now he's in his mid 20s. And he's one of the river's most patient and skilled anglers. He's frequently seen at the falls. He's been seen in the lower river a lot over the past week on uh, our lower river cameras. And Otis has certainly benefited from the ample salmon run at Brooks River uh, this summer. By the end of July, he was really looking healthily fat. Um, and he looks even bigger now compared to July, as you can see in the photos. His success is really in spite of the competition and ailments that hinder his ability to fish. Uh, as an older bear, Otis suffers from missing broken and worn teeth. He's actually missing two canine teeth and a lot of his other teeth are greatly worn. Uh, when we get a look at his mouth through binoculars, we can see that his incisors are very worn. Many of his molars are very worn. And Otis is no longer large enough or strong enough really to displace the other large adult males from uh, the preferred fishing spots at the falls, like the jacuzzi or in the far pool. So when he comes up against 747 or 856 or 151, uh, he has to utilize a different strategy to make a living. Uh, Instead, he waits patiently for space to open up. Uh, so when I watch Otis, I see a bear that recognizes patience and adaptability. Uh, and that for him is a winning strategy for sure. So those are the first three bears Pepper. We have uh, another match coming up on September 30th. And this is the second match of September 30th. It's a, it's a family affair though. This is a uh, experienced mother 402 and she's facing her former cub, number 812. Naomi, there's probably no other bear at Brooks River with more maternal experience than 402. Yes, 402, and it shows. She's about 24 years old. It makes her uh, an older bear on the Brooks River. She's almost as old as Otis. And um, she, uh, when she has cubs, she is the multitasking champion. Um, last year a lot of moms related to that when she was in fat bear week and um i i have a fondness for this bear because she she will be at the falls when she has cubs and she will have her cubs there and, and she's had seven litters and the last two litters she's she's had she's had quads and she will take them up there and she will fish on the lip like a champ and um and still get fat so this year she had no cubs and um, so uh, she didn't have to multitask as much. However, she was being romanced for several weeks by bear 856. And that meant that uh, it was a little more difficult for her to fish because um, 856 was courting her and following her all over the Brooks River. So we gotta give it to this lovely lady, 402, 
And um, Brooklyn, I think it might be a little tough to be competing against your own son. Tell us about uh, 812. You know, it's possible that this is going to be a struggle, especially because 812 is a very charming bear. He has been able to ingratiate himself on some of the more dominant, larger bears on the river, which has allowed him to have access to some of the more um, productive fishing spots on the river that other bears um, who are not able to approach some of these more dominant bears have not had access to. So that has allowed him to get very, very fat. Um, it's going to be a challenge going up against such a skilled lip fisher, but he does take advantage of using um, the lip as another place to fish as well. So we will see if um, Sun will be able to topple mom um, in this matchup, but who's to say? And especially when they are going to be going against one of the biggest bears on the Brooks River. Mike, can you share a little bit about 747? And I would say that he's the biggest bear at Brooks River. So that's, <laughs> I want to I want to clarify that. There may be maybe not enough uh, superlatives to describe the size of 747. So he's he, he got a buy this year. Uh, he's an absolute unit in the truest sense of the meme, a, a real tank, a giant among bears. Uh, he was estimated to weigh more than 1,400 pounds last year. And he's the largest bear I've ever seen and likely one of the largest bears alive on earth today. Uh, you can't grow as big as 747 without being a good angler and dominating access to you know, the most productive fishing spots at Brooks Falls. And 747, when he arrived at Brooks Falls in uh, June, he really didn't seem to leave very much. He's been at Brooks Falls most every day this summer, just catching fish one after another, eating thousands of pounds of salmon uh, this year. Only rival males of comparable size, uh, which of, of which there are very few, can, can challenge him for fishing spots. Uh, but although you know, 747, is a really large uh, bear, and a lot, and many of the dominant bears can maintain their rank uh, through aggression. Seven four seven, you know, typically keeps his status just by sheer size alone. Most other bears recognize they can't compete with him physically, and they yield space as he walks through the river. I really do think we should feel privileged to witness such a large bear. It may be a long time before we see uh, another bear grow as big as seven four seven. So that's the first half of our Fat Bear Week uh, bracket, the first um, first half of our bracket, but we still have many bears to introduce. October 1 is day two, Fat Bear Week. And, in the, um, and on this match, we're gonna find the young mother, 719, versus the enigmatic number 32, Chunk. Brooklyn, 719 is definitely uh, unique in many ways, and she's a, another fun bear to watch. It's also important to note that 719 is the descendant of some Brooks River royalty, the reigning Fat Bear Week champion, 435 Holly. So she already brings some status to um, her position on the bracket. But something that's really special about 719 is her playful nature. Even as a sow with cubs, she um, last year would seek out other bears to play with. Um, so she has a very playful nature, which may assist her in um, toppling the contender that is against her. Um, but when you've got a bear that is as chunky as 32, who knows? <laughs> and 32 chunk is her opponent. Um, I, I, Chunk is, he's such a unique bear in, in a lot of ways. And I do have to say that, you know, uh, you know what are you going to do really when Chunk and all of his Chunkomaniacs run wild on you? Because Chunk does have a lot of fans. He's a fairly popular bear. Uh, he's a pear-shaped large adult male who, likes, uh, who likely weighs somewhere around 1,100 or 1,200 pounds. You know, given his size, he's often able to access his preferred fishing spots with ease as long as his rivals such as 747 and 856 aren't in his way. In recent years, you know, he's really shown a, um, a tendency to wait patiently and scavenge for leftover salmon and even play with other bears. And that's kind of uncommon for a bear of chunk size and age um, uh, to, to, under, to undertake. 
So uncommon behaviors from dominant adult bear. Um, and that's why I think Chunk is a bit of an enigma. Uh, for years, I've I've expected Chunk to behave more like 747 and 856 and really show his size and dominate other bears. And he certainly asserts himself when he needs to, and he's not shy of conflict. But as his other behaviors, his, maybe his patience and playfulness occasionally demonstrates, uh, Chunk really is his own bear. Naomi, who will 719 or Chunk face in the second round? Well... They've got a challenge because they face the queen of corpulence, the reigning 2019 Fat Bear Week champion, Bear 435 Holly. And Bear 435 Holly is a very competitive bear. She's an older bear. She is 25. She's almost as old as Otis, could be about the same age. Her corpulence, her fatness last year, paid off for her because she came back with a spring cub. Because we know that um, bears can't get pregnant, females can't get pregnant unless they have enough fat on them. They give birth in, in, um, in the winter in their dens. And she certainly was fat enough and she came back with a spring cub. And this year, Holly may be the hardest working bear on the river. Um, I almost never see her out of the water. and she um look at uh the difference between her in the beginning of the season and the end of the season this girl got fat and she had a rambunctious uh little cub to handle um that cub would wander off to others and um but still this this bear is very competitive so 719 or 32 chunk they're gonna have some tough competition here mike What's next? Absolutely. And actually, uh, you know, coming up next in the final first round matchup on October 1, it's between the two youngest bears in Fat Bear Week. Holly Spring Cub, who is one of the most recognizable cubs on the river, and 909, an up and coming young female. Naomi, you were just talking about uh, 435 Holly and her Spring Cub, but uh, can you give us some more insight into that Spring Cub story this year? Yeah, well, um, that cub is a brave guy or girl. I don't know the sex of this cub, but um, uh, this has been a very adventurous cub. Um, this cub and I are um, good buddies. Uh, this cub uh, decided that I might be a good playmate and followed me off the road and would not take no for an answer. And he only stopped when mom huffed and... Um, beckoned him to come with her. Um, he did, has done the same thing with other cubs and with sub-adults. Um, and unfortunately, I think he may have done this with a porcupine because this poor cub has got porcupine quills in its paw and has been limping around on three legs for some time now. Uh, it looks like it's getting better. Um, it's putting weight on that that paw now so bears are very resilient this is a story of resilience and the other thing i'll say about this young contender and uh part of the um 435 monarchy is that um spring cubs gain so much weight they're about a pound when they are born in the den and they can increase their body size up to 60 percent so um this guy may be small relative to 747, but this, this cub deserves some credit. And, and uh, this cub's uh, competition yep, in this, in this matchup. Uh, Brooklyn, go ahead with uh, number 909. Yes, the second youngest bear in the competition this year is 909. Um, she is a young female that was generally playful with other bears, but once she was emancipated from her mother, became a little bit hesitant, venturing down towards the falls, just because of the dominant bears that would typically take up space there. So for a while, she wasn't really sure where she fit in the Brooks River hierarchy. But um, in the last year and a half, she has really started to develop a confidence um, that has taken her to the spot of her mother's legacy, 409 Beadnose. Um, 
where she positions herself on the lip of the falls and has really learned how to master the art of catching the salmon from the lip of the falls. She has iconic, fluffy, um, blonde ears that make her very recognizable and may just carry her through to um, compete against another fluffy, blonde-eared bear, 128 <laughs> Grazer. And Grazer is the final bear in our uh, competition this year. She also gets a buy. She is one of the largest adult females at Brooks River. She's also one of the fiercest females. Grazer will boldly and consistently challenge other bears who come too close to her cubs. And she'll even attack uh, adult males who are much larger than her. Usually those attacks are successful and the other bears back down. Grazer, as you can see, is often very fat in late summer. And like 719, what makes her weight gain even more impressive is that she's raising cubs this year. Uh, Grazer is raising two spring cubs. And normally mother bears with cubs are noticeably skinnier than single female bears. Uh, the record-breaking salmon run in Central Katmai certainly helped Grazer get fat this year, but we got to give her credit. We got to credit Grazer's skill at fishing for all her curves. And at the same time, you know, she's devoting a tremendous amount of energy into raising her cubs. So she is a real contender, I think, for Fat Bear Week uh, this year. And that is our final bracket. That is all of our 12 contestants. This could be one of the fattest Fat Bear Weeks ever, if not the fattest Fat Bear Week ever. And, uh, you know, before we uh, conclude our broadcast today, um, Brooklyn and Naomi, I really want to um, get your opinion on something. Uh, let's uh, let's yeah. let's get some predictions going on here. So I want to hear your predictions for Fat Bear Week this year. Brooklyn, we'll start with you. Who do you think is going to wind up in the finale? And maybe if you want to share who you think might win. I don't know if you want to go that far or not. Ugh, okay. Well, if write-in votes were allowed, I believe that 634 Popeye would win in a landslide. Unfortunately, he did not return in enough time to make it on the bracket. So with that being said, looking at this year's contenders, I see our finale potentially being between 128 Razor and 747. But I think, I think Grazer may pull it out. I think she may be our 2020 champion. Not to hurt your feelings, Mike. I know that you're really pulling for somebody else, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm just looking at her photos and they're pretty impressive. Naomi, what are you thinking? <laughs> oh my God, uh, put me in the spot here. Um, Grazer has been impressive and she changed her fishing strategy this year. So I will give her credit for that because um, she, she had an injury. Um, I've got a swipe from a bear that she probably grazered, and um, I think that made her stay away from the falls and pick another spot, and she was successful. Um, I think the finale is uh, going to be, I agree with you, between 128 Grazer and the um, Hippopotamus um, uh, 747, um, but um, I think 747 may pull it out this year. That's, uh, you know but it's gonna be a fight to the finish. Uh, it's a competitive year. Mike, all right, I know who you think is gonna win, but let's hear about it. <laughs> yeah, this, this Fat Bear Week may be the, the dip, most difficult to predict. I think there's there's a lot that can happen, a lot of uncertainty in it. Um, but longtime Bear Camp fans uh, know that I'm a pretty, uh, pretty much a partisan hack um, for 747. So I got like my regular Bear Camp hat on here, um, but I'm gonna swap that out for my oh, um, Fat Bear Week, my, uh, let me get it straight here, my uh, vote for Fat Bear uh, 747. Um, this is from last year, uh, <laughs> but I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear it for the end of the broadcast here because I definitely am going with 747 once again. You know, despite my best efforts to lobby for him and to get him uh, to be Fat Bear Week champion, he hasn't won yet. Um, so maybe this will be his year. I do think, like the both of you, that uh, this year it'll come down to, to Grazer and 747, but it's really up to the public to decide. So really a lot of stuff can happen in between. And I think it'll be a really fun competition. And you know what, Team 747, you got to step up because yeah, like like Brooklyn said, <laughs> Grazer could win. She could win and she's deserving. She's certainly deserving. So 
we got to get the vote out here. So, um, so uh, <laughs> this has been a, a really fun chat. Uh, I think you know just to, just to recap before we get to our conclusion, um, you know, Fat Bear Week voting begins on September 30th. So download your bracket from fatbearweek.org. You can fill it out, share it on social media, tag it with the hashtag Fat Bear Week, uh, and campaign for your favorite bear in Fat Bear Week. Share your platform in the comments on the bear cams and on social media. Tell everyone why you think this bear is deserving of your vote and his vote. And you can also submit campaign posters for bear cam prize uh, at explore.org slash fat dash bear dash week dash contest. You can also find that link in the future comment at the bottom of the page. Uh, the submission deadline for those campaign posters is today, but voting open through September 28th. And there are many pages of posters uh, to look at. And anytime I need a smile, I go to those campaign posters and I take a look. There's many, many wonderful submissions. So if you need a smile on your face, check it out. It's really, really great. Uh, fat is the fuel that powers a brown bear's wintertime survival. When hibernating bears do not eat, they don't drink, they don't urinate, they don't defecate. And each bear understands they are working against the clock in order to gain the fat reserves necessary to survive not only winter, but also give them a head, start next, uh, a head start next spring when food is scarce, cubs are hungry, and the mating season begins. Pepper Week is an opportunity for us to consider the challenges bears face in order to gain enough weight to survive winter. And it gives us a chance to weigh the competition and marvel at their success, as well as the health and productivity of cat mice ecosystems. Uh, Brooklyn, Naomi, this has been, a, yeah, again, a really fun chat. Thanks very much for joining me. And I want to give you both a special thanks for working so hard to make Fat Bear Week a success. So everybody who's watching this right now, definitely, you know, uh, you know, give Brooklyn and Naomi a virtual round of applause because they are working extremely hard this year to make it a success. And I want to thank them both publicly for that right now. Thank you. Thank you I, um, I, it's not often we get to celebrate fatness. And as New York Magazine said this week, um, this is the best week of the year. And I think I agree. Well, well said. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for joining me today, Naomi in Brooklyn. Again, my name is Mike Fitz with Explore.org. My guests today have been Naomi Boak and Brooklyn White Rangers at Katmai National Park in Alaska. I look forward to everybody uh, voting for Fat Bear Week this year, and we'll see who wins. Uh, the final matchup will be on October 6th, and Fat Bear Week starts on September 30th. Have a great day, everyone, and stay well during these challenging times. <laughs>